I picked up the morning paper, it was filled with tragic things. I sat down to watch the news, there were more depressing scenes. Seems like all this old world over, only trouble can be found. Only looking up to heaven keeps us all from looking down. Here's a little good news, God is still in control, has the power still in business, changing lives and saving souls. Here's a little good news, let it ease your troubled mind, Jesus Church is getting ready and it's almost leaving time. All around us hearts are breaking, you can hear it in their song. Someone went and left somebody, someone did somebody wrong. There's a better way of living with a future bright ahead. Just listen to the gospel and this is what it says. Here's a little good news, God is still in control, has a power still in business, changing lives and saving souls. Here's a little good news, let it ease your troubled mind, Jesus Church is getting ready and it's almost leaving time. Here's a little good news, God is still in control, has a power still in business, changing lives and saving souls. Here's a little good news. Let it ease your troubled mind. Jesus' church is getting ready, and it's almost leaving time. Jesus' church is getting ready, and it's almost leaving time. Thank you. Amen. Well, um... It's good to be here this evening. Thank you for being faithful and for being in church tonight. And uh, to say I'm nervous is would be an understatement, but uh, uh, I usually get nervous when I preach the word of God. And um, thankful for God's grace yeah. in my life uh, personally. Uh, thankful for my wife. If she just wave a little bit. She don't like to stand, so she can wave. Amen. Um, thank you for your uh, investment uh, just in uh missions and Southeast Asia, our team out there. And, um, you know, I, be I believe I can speak for each and every member of our team, uh, the Board family, the Vong family, the Keo family, the Esposito family, um, uh, Sue, uh, Michelle, uh, Brother Adrian. And, um, you know, we really appreciate uh, just our home church. Um, really sure. grateful what, for what God is doing out there. And we, we understand that it's because of his grace and his mercy um, that we get to do what we do on a daily basis just to see lives changed, um, just to see people turn from darkness to light. And uh, thank you for your hospitality uh, since my wife and I arrived, just your kindness to us and uh, welcoming us. And, and uh, for many of you had a part in my brother's wedding. Thank you for that. And I'm not... Savani or Titi, okay? I just want to mention that. Um, uh, I would see people pass by as, you know, I got here Monday and uh, last Monday and, and uh, people pass by and they pass by real fast and they're like, whatever. Then as they're passing by, they're like, oh, it's you, okay. Uh, but um, uh, it's good to, to be here. Thank you for having a, a part in his wedding and, and thank you for your investment in his life. I know Brother Nate played a huge role in and uh, investing in my brother, and I appreciate that, Brother Nate. And, um, you know, if you have your uh, Bibles, we have uh, two passages I, I want to go to, First Kings uh, and also the book of Ecclesiastes, First Kings chapter 3 and Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Let's uh, save your spot there at, um, in the book of Ecclesiastes, but we're going to look at First Kings chapter 3 and... Uh, you know, if you have a question about missions or about Southeast Asia, about what God is doing out there, feel, feel free to uh, stop me and, and, and ask a question or just feel free to talk to us about anything. Uh, we would like to be a blessing anyway. Um, 1 Kings chapter 3 and uh, also save a spot in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. And I have an outline here that, I picked up by an evangelist 
um, that I've heard about four years ago. And I really don't remember much about the message, but the outline God really used to speak to my heart. And I just want to uh, share it with you this evening in, in a Bible study here. Um, 1 Kings chapter 3, we're going to begin in verse 3, and we're going to read uh, to verse 13. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David, his father, when he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. And the king um, went to uh, Gibeon uh, to sacrifice there, um, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar in Gibeon, the Lord appeared, Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast um, kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne at his as it is this day, and now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that it may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this uh, thy gr so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing, and God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, um, and has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall there arise any like unto thee. Verse 13, and I have also given thee, which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Let's pray and we'll get into the, the message. Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity I have this evening. Thank you for your people meeting in your house. I just pray that you would help us to humble ourselves and help us to, to have open hearts and open minds and just to receive uh, just the truth of your word this evening. I just pray that you will meet with us and help us to leave changed and closer to you as a result of uh, this passage, of, of this truth. Uh, thank you. I just pray that uh, you would bless um, our time here this evening. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Here you have, um, you see Solomon. And, and I love uh, uh, the beginning of Solomon's life. Just to read how close he was with the Lord. His love. His humility and, and meekness and devotion and sincerity and, and, and him walking in uh, that connection uh, that he had with the Lord. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and 7, uh, after uh, Solomon uh, had uh, got done praying, at the end of praying, fire came down uh, from heaven and consumed the offerings and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And here you see Solomon's relationship with the Lord. And, and there was a closeness there. There was a, a sincerity there. And, and, of course, we read on. And what started as really a great relationship kind of turned sour. His heart turned from the Lord. He got distracted, detoured. You know, he was known as Solomon the Great. Some of whom we say, would ha say he had everything. The son of David, great wisdom. He had God's favor and he had riches and, and power and military might. Great administrator. He would eventually write the book of Proverbs and, 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 and the Song of Solomon. And he was known and recognized throughout the known world. And let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter, three, chapter 1. And let's read what happened later toward the end of his life. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 1, to verse 3. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. 
What profit have a man of all his labor which he take it under the sun? And here at the end of his life, he comes to regret and, and remorse. And he says, all is vanity. And let's go to chapter 2 and let's look at verse 15, 16 and 17 here, chapter 2. Then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, so it happened even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as the fool? Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Here, uh, earlier we read how Solomon had a connection with the Lord. He loved the Lord, and he was close to God, and he walked with God. And here, at, toward the end of his life, he said, all is vanity. It means empty vanity. It means empty no value, no meaning. And it's talking about life under the sun, life that's lived on this earth. You know, it's apparent by the multitude of confessions that King Solomon made that he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes after many backsliding years. See, Solomon was searching for happiness. He, he wasn't looking for some kind of quick fix happiness, or, 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 but he's looking for fulfillment. And, 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 and complete happiness. And he was searching in every activity and pursuit under the sun on this earth. The word vanity appears 37 times. Which is empty. That which is without value and meaning. That which never makes sense and never satisfied. And if we're not careful this evening, we can end up like Solomon. Where we can be in regret and, and we can, you know... And I want to remind you tonight, and, and I thank you for being in church tonight. May I remind you, we're only here because of the grace of God. Amen. And let's not forget that. We're faithful because God is faithful. Yeah. We're here because God is gracious and merciful to us. And let's not forget that for a moment and, and, and become boastful and proud. It's by God's grace that we're here. That we get to, to, to be in church tonight. That we uh, are saved. That, that, we, uh, that you have a Christian family. That, that, that some of you go to Christian school. It's by God's grace. Amen. And any of us can end up like Solomon. Right. Solomon here in the book of Ecclesiastes is describing life on earth and the folly of that existence when God is left out. See, the book of Ecclesiastes, if you just read it without studying it, without uh, um, just doing research on it, you, man, you can get really confused. You know, like the book of Judges. Uh, um, uh, um, when you read the book of Judges, man, I don't like reading the book of Judges. That's some uh, cruel things that goes on in, in, in the book of Judges. But, it, but if you look at uh, what, what, what it represents, what it means, it, it talks about it's life uh, uh, without God. How evil man can be without God. And the book of Ecclesiastes is a life that's lived under the sun on this earth with God left out. It's vanity. It's empty. No matter how exciting life may seem to be under the sun, ultimately, ultimately it has no value without God. And here, uh, Solomon challenges us to, to, to take an honest look at the vanity of life without God as its center. Most people are trying to get what they really need from under the sun instead of from the maker of the sun. Solomon, the man who had everything, had nothing without God. Also, he wanted us to learn from this book as early as possible what he finally learned late in life. That true satisfaction comes from knowing God and doing what pleases him. I want to give three uh, observations just uh, from the book of Ecclesiastes, the life of Solomon. The first one is a selfish life leads to emptiness. A selfish life leads 
to emptiness. Let's, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Since we're, uh, um, we're there, but let's go back there. Let's look at verse 1. And notice all the personal pronouns here. I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. And notice verse 2, I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, uh, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself into wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. Verse 4, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds, uh, kind of fruits. I made me pools of water uh, uh, to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and, and, and had servants born in my house. And I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasures of kings and of the provinces. I uh, um, got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as music, musical instruments and that of all sorts. And I was great and increased more than all that were before me. In Jerusalem, also my wisdom remained with me. And verse 10, let's look at verse 10. And whatsoever mine eye desired, I kept not from me. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And, that, and this was my portion of all my labor. Somehow Solomon went from loving the Lord. With all his heart to loving himself. And as we look at this passage, I want to remind everyone in here tonight that a selfish life leads to emptiness. Yeah. And we're all selfish by nature. Uh, I remember uh, George came. Uh, where's George at here? George and James came uh, to Cambodia to visit us. Uh, was it Ospino? Where's where George at here? Over here. Can you raise? Okay. Um, we went soul winning at a Viet Vietnamese fishing village. Brother Vong was there. George was there. And, and James was there. And I'm going to confess one of my sins here, okay? I have many sins. Amen. And uh, we were, um, you know, I was, I was born in Indiana. I grew up in Southern California. And, 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 uh, and you understand why I said that in a bit here. We were in Camp, uh, Cambodia and at a vis Vietnamese fishing village, you know, uh, knocking on the gates of hell, trying to win souls for Christ. And Brother George, there were some, all these Vietnamese kids all around us, amen. And, and I, was, I was, you know, uh, standing there. And Brother George brought out some candies. And it was Mexican candies, amen. I, I love Mexican candy. I grew up here, amen. I haven't had Mexican candy for, for a long time. And, and I started, you know, my mouth started watering. But here, me being a missionary, amen, I, I didn't want to beg him for a piece of candy, amen. But he was passing it out to the kids. You know what I want to do? I want to take it from that kid, amen, and eat it, amen. That's what I wanted to do. But Brother Vong was there. I didn't want him to say anything to me. And then, and then James, I had to be a good testimony to him. And in my heart, I was thinking, man, I hope George gives me one, amen. And, 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 and my mouth and, and about to start to drool, amen. And, 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 you know, I can taste it. By the way, he didn't give me one, amen. Uh, um, but, but I was going to go buy candy and trade it with the kids, you know. But, but, um, but can I tell you something? Man, I was being selfish. And we all, you know, we all have that problem. And, 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 and it can happen to any one of us. And, and we can end up living a selfish life. One of the most challenging practices in life is to give God his rightful place in our life. To keep God first and to avoid idolatry. You know, the number one idol in your life or our life is not the Lakers. It's not the Dodgers. It's, it's not uh, 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 food. It's not um, um, material possessions. Can I, uh, it's not Buddha. Uh, it, it's the, you know what the number one idol in my life is me. 
And the number one idol in your life is you. A selfish life leads to emptiness. Number two, the second observation is a sinful life leads to emptiness. A sinful life leads to emptiness. A selfish life leads to emptiness. A sinful life leads to emptiness. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. A selfish life leads to emptiness. A sinful life leads to emptiness. 1 Kings chapter 11. Let's look at the life of Solomon here. Let's start in, in verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, woman of the Moab, uh, Moabs, uh, uh, Moab, uh, well, I can't even say that anymore, amen. Uh, Ammites, Edomites, uh, let's go down to verse 2. And of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon clave unto these in love. Verse 3, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and, and uh, 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as with the heart of David his father. Uh, let's go to verse 6. For Sol and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. And let's go down to verse 9 here. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Here you see in the life of Solomon, a sinful life leads to emptiness. Solomon gave in to the three deadly sins, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I'm going to just read the definition for the lust of the flesh. The desire for that which satisfy any of the physical needs. The lust of the eyes is a desire to possess what we see or to have those things which have visual appeal. The pride of life. The pride of life uh, uh, can be defined as anything that is of the world, meaning anything that leads to arrogance, pride in self, uh, presumption, and boasting. And Solomon, just like many Christians, fell into this trap. You know... We all heard it before. Let me read James 1, chapter, 4, uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin, uh, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Death. We heard the, 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 the phrase, sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. And, and it will cost you more. Then you want to pay. The Bible says in Psalms 1, the ungodly are not so, but like, are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgments, nor, judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. A sinful life leads to emptiness. And I want to remind uh, everyone here this evening, uh, when you choose to live a selfish life, it's going to lead to vanity. It's going to lead to emptiness. If you choose to live a sinful life, it's going to lead to emptiness. As we see right here in, in Solomon's life. And the last observation, a spiritual life leads to fruitfulness. A spiritual life leads to to fruitfulness. Let, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. A spiritual life leads to fruitfulness. Before we were talking about life under the sun, a selfish life, a sinful life, life on this earth. But a spiritual life is life under the sun, Jesus Christ. 
Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 1, verse 7, and then 13 and 14. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Verse 7, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work to judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Here Sol Solomon is, is pleading with us. He, he, he's telling us to, to, to uh, um, remember our creator. Remember that we are, uh, we, uh, God is our creator and, and that we belong to God and everything we have belongs to God and we ought to live like there's a God. And Solomon is telling us to fear God, uh, to, have, uh, 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 to tremble at God's presence, to, to have an awe, uh, a respect for God, to live our life as if there was a God. And here, he's telling us to obey God, to keep his commandment. Amen. Obedience. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, um, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I want to encourage every believer in here tonight, hey, to choose the spiritual. To choose to live by faith. Yes, sir. To choose uh, to die to, uh, to self. What, what, do we, what do I mean by that? To, to take up the cross and follow Jesus. Amen. John chapter 17, verse number 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. In this life, Jesus glorified God. So should we. Jesus, Jesus glorified God by finishing the work that God gave him to do. So should we. May I encourage you to, 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 to continue to stay faithful. To continue to, to walk with God and, and to live for God. And, and to not be weary in well-doing. Uh, may I uh, uh, encourage you to, to fight the good fight of faith. To endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. To finish your course. Hey, don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Uh, Sunday school teacher, keep teaching your class. Uh, 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 keep running your bus route. Keep serving the Lord. Keep coming to church. Keep walking with God. Amen. I want to encourage you tonight to choose the spiritual. Don't choose to be selfish. Don't choose the sinful path. Choose to be spiritual. Why? Because a spiritual life leads to fruitfulness. Amen. Faith in Christ determines our eternal destiny. Works investment giving to the Lord determines our eternal rewards. I got, I got some pictures here I, I want to show you. And, and uh, Brother Esposito, Jeremy, if you can put it up whenever you're ready. Last time I was able to preach, I, I told a story of Psalm, uh, Psalm and, and her family. And, uh, and, and, and how God, through the power of the gospel, changed their lives. Uh, um, and, you know, First, she was saved, and, and, and she just went through a lot of persecution by her husband. And, and, and just, man, we prayed for him for, for, for a long time, almost two years we prayed for him to be saved. We thought there would be no hope. But she's, uh, even though he persecuted her and, and treated her wrong and, 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 and for her faith, and she had a hard time, the village uh, uh, basically uh, um, uh, turned against her, and, and, and her kids wasn't for her. But she kept coming faithfully with her daughter, on a, 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 say, mom, the little, the little girl there. And, and she kept coming faithfully. And she, she kept asking, Pastor, pray for my husband to be saved. And, 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 you know, now, just to make a long story short, uh, her husband is saved. Uh, um, uh, uh, saying, uh, well, her son is saved and he's living for the Lord. He's growing. Brother Johnny's doing a great job teaching him and investing in him, Brother Board. And, and uh, their daughter, Palai, she's now saved and she's married to one of our young men. And, man, it, it's just exciting. And, and, and why? Because she chose the spiritual. Even though through persecution, through trials, she stayed. She said, man, I, I'm going to choose the spiritual. And that's a testament of her life, a spiritual life leads the fruitfulness. Can we show the next picture here? Here is um, Naban and, and his wife, Ni. Nee. Um, this was a few days, uh, the day before we flew out here. 
I've been working with Van for months, um, and he lives in a city far away. He just moved down to the capital city where we're at, and, and we've been sharing the gospel with Van. And, 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 you know, he's, was searching, he's been searching for God. And, and I remember when I was sharing the gospel with him uh, just a, a couple Saturdays ago, and, and, and man, as he was asking good questions, and, 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 and when him and his wife, they both prayed and trusted Christ as their Savior. Can I tell you something? Man, I was shaking. I was so happy. I, man, I, I, was, I was sitting there and my hands were literally shaking. Because I, I, this is awesome. Somebody's getting saved. And, and, and a couple just both prayed and trusted the Lord as their Savior. Man, I'm, I'm glad. By God's grace, I get to see that. And I hope you want to see that. I hope you want to see your fruit. I hope 5, 10 years down, 15, 20 years down the road, man, I, I want to stay faithful. Yeah. I want to see fruit. Your kids growing up, loving the Lord, serving the Lord, those who you led to the Lord. And, and, and now they're, they're reaching out and they're witnessing and they're getting people saved. Let's uh, show the next picture here. Let me look at the time here. Here, um. Just gonna share one story of a family here. This is um, Naren. Naren started coming to church. He was invited by uh, one of our, our, our young national leaders, uh, Brother Man, and 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 he um, eventually got saved. And and he was praying for his parents uh, 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 to come to church. And and his parents uh, um, really it seemed like there was no hope. And, and they, they've tried everything, and, 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 and they've been abused. They've been used by religion. And he was praying and praying, and he was staying faithful to the Lord. And, 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 and he chose the spiritual. And can we show the next picture? So Naren got saved, and, and, and right next to me here, or, or Titi, amen, Brother Zavani, amen, um, is Vod. Vod is his younger brother, Vod. Eventually got saved, and, 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 and after Naren prayed, and we were praying for his family, and, 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 and Vod started coming to church, and he got saved. And can we show the next picture? Right here is, is uh, Sreirat, Sreirat um, and th that's their little sister. She's probably 11 now, I think. And, 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 and she, my wife started sharing the gospel with her, and she got saved. And, and let's show the next picture. And then this is her mom, Srey Mom. Uh, Srey Mom uh, started uh, coming. And, and, and I remember uh, um, uh, when, when we first started visiting her house, she would give us this weird look. But we were praying and we were reaching out to them. And, 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 and uh, she came to uh, my apartment there. And, and she, uh, my wife witnessed to her. And, and she got saved. Man, I wish she could have been there uh, that, that evening, in our, uh, that afternoon in our living room. She was crying. She was crying because God saved her. And she's been searching for her hope and for truth for so long. And she's been used and abused, as I mentioned. And she finally found the truth and she started crying. And um, uh, can I get the next picture? And uh, her husband uh, was skeptical at first. He's like, what's going on here? You know, and we kept praying. We kept praying. And, 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 and eventually Brother Bord and I went over uh, to uh, their house. And, and we began witnessing to him. And, 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 and he got saved. I mean, it, it was just amazing. And he, he prayed and he trusted Christ as his Savior. And, 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 and uh, can I get the next slide here? This is their oldest son, Hood. And, and eventually, Hood, you know, he, was, he took the longest, you know, guys, they're hard-headed, amen. Uh, um, we had a hard time with him, but he finally got saved. And, 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 and can, can I sh get the next picture here? It's, uh, the last picture here. Uh, here is uh, their family at our church and, and uh, one of our special Sundays. And, and man, if you can just see the joy on their face. And, and, and the testimonies that they would share, they would always thank the Lord. And, and, and they would just share blessing after blessing. That's fruit right there. That's fruit right there. And I hope you want that. I hope you want that. A spiritual life leads to fruitfulness. Don't choose a selfish life. A selfish life leads to, to emptiness. A, a, a sinful life leads to emptiness. But a spiritual life leads 
the fruitfulness. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed, uh, precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior soul? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty handed go? I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and your fruit should remain. I want to encourage you tonight to choose the spiritual. Avoid the selfish life. Avoid the sinful life. Let's choose the spiritual because the spiritual life leads to fruitfulness. If we can all stand and, and with our...